um, if you um, if you know anything about jQuery, like this is the entry point for jQuery. And so the first thing we do is um, we grab the medicine um, object, which says um, what avail available versions of medicine are there. And right now, the only available version is 1.0. Uh, that's still in progress, too. So um, this gets the JSON, or it sends a request and gets that JSON back about what available versions are. So we do some checking, and then we say, hey, is um, we loop through all the versions, and we say, hey, is this version uh, version 1.0? And if it is, then we're like, cool, we can use 1.0, right? Um, and so we um, take the version object, and we go to its links, and we say, we want the entry point um, for the 1.0 um, medicine API. And we say, OK, we'll take that, that URI from that link, and we will do get JSON again. So we're going to issue another um, call to medicine, and um, we're going to get back um, the link to the simulations and a link to all the engines that are available on that. And so um, that comes back, and you can see, like, here's the, we're, we're finding the link to the engines. Um, and we're querying the engines URI for the um, the engines that are available, and um, we want to get um, also a link to the simulations, so we can see what simulations are available, and we can create a dialog of the simulations, um, and we can that that's actually what this this dialog box is up here, uh, the dialog box of the, of the list of the simulations, um, and we can say. Um, uh, what else would I do? Here's, this is just simulation setup. Um, we want to say, hey, there's a button here. Um, it's a create simulation button. And if you click it, then call this function. And when you do that, um, we want to you know, hide the current simulations dialog box. Um, we want to create a new dialog box for um, creating the simulation. And we're going to take the um, uh, the selected train engine and the selected agent engine. Uh, we're going to capture those um, dropdowns, and then we're going to um, uh, loop through all the trains and all the agent engines. We're going to give those. We're going to populate those dropdown boxes with these options, um, and then we're going to. Um, Say when you hit the create button for the, the new simulation dialog box, we're gonna go to the um, the add link on the simulations uh, resource, and we're gonna find that link, and then we're gonna uh, make a post call to that. So we can post a new, or we can create a new simulation by make, by making a post to it, um, and it will give us back like um, the location of the new simulation, and so. Um, that's pretty much it on the front end. Um, so I'll just walk you through like what it looks like in the browser. Uh, so here's like all my my test simulations. Um, so this is after it's like queried for the version, after it's found out that it has a version one, um, after uh, it's queried for like all the engines. So if I hit create, then I can give. Oh, that's kind of that's a weird bug. Okay, so I it should be hidden up here. So I can give my simulation like a simulation A, and I can pick out which engines I want to pick from. So I only have a terrain reference engine and agent reference engine right now. And if I hit this create button, it'll make that post to the server, or should make that post to the server. I hope it made that post to the server. I was doing it before. Uh, now I'm going to look like a fool. Yeah. OK. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, it's actually overlaid. It's part of like the HTML document. So like the scene occurs like inside this canvas element, and then you still have like links at the top, um, and you can still actually overlay HTML on top of the on top of the scene. And so it's yeah, it's all HTML driven, and it's and JavaScript driven, and CSS driven, and it's jQuery UI. Um, so that's that. Um, and then I want to sort of talk a little bit about like um, the um, medicine project, just because I want to give an overview of maybe how it's structured and how it handles these calls. 
Um, and how it interacts with Well, I'm sorry? Oh, awesome. Okay, cool. So um, let me go to... Um, Okay, so uh, this file right here is um, the Metasim, um, like API entry point. It's WebJS on the Web Hex Planet project, um, and what it does is says. Um, hey, this is where Mongo is. Um, it does like here's some some functions, right? Um, it does a um, all these app gets are like, hey, this is my application, and when you perform a get on this URI, I'm going to execute this function. So you can say like, um, I want to create my versions object. You know, it has an, a um, version of one. 0.0. Um, here's the entry point. The entry point is medicine slash 1.0. If you want to access the 1.0 version of the of the API, um, we have like uh, uh, a section where we specify um, like here all the available um, engines. Um, so if you want to add a new engine, this is where you would you would add that data. Um, we have if you um, perform a git on medicine slash, and then this is sort of like a special variable, this version. Um, so if we do a, a git on medicine slash 1.0, um, we're going to check that, hey, you actually gave us a 1.0 for the version. Uh, if you don't, we'll give you back a 4.4. Um, but if you do, then we'll send you back links for um, getting the simulations and getting the available engines. Um, if you send me a git for medicine 1.0 engines. We're going to do a um, MongoDB query on the available engines, and we're just going to send those back because it's JSON. So it's we don't have to do any parsing, which is awesome. Yeah, so we have the DB objects, which is our entry point into MongoDB, and we say we're working with the engines collection here. And that's just a whole bunch of JSON objects. and we're going to find um, all the objects that have a version that matches the um, this version variable that you sent us, so a version of 1.0. And we're going to convert all those to an array, and um, that, that array is now named engines, and we are going to send back a response, and it's going to be an object, which is this guy here, and it's going to be... Um, it's going to have one field in it, and it's going to be named engines, and it's going to be the array of engines that, that were was directly in MongoDB, which is I love it. It's it's so cool. Yeah, the the object. Okay, so yeah, so this is this is just an object, and it has a field called engines, and that field is the array that we got back from MongoDB. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of good examples of, um, of how to make Mongo calls. Um, at least some basic ones. Um, there's enough to go off of um, if you want to if you want to play with Mongo yourself. And I, I just want to go through. Uh, I'm going to skip some of this other stuff like uh, getting simulations. But I really want to go through how simulations are created because it talks about um, how we interact with engines. Um, and so uh, here's it again. If if um, you make a post to this application, and the URI is medicine, in this case 1.0, and simulations. Um, then what we do is we create a, we're, we want to create a new simulation, right? Because that's what a post is. And so um, we're going to create a new simulation ID. This is kind of like a GUID um, in MongoDB terms. Um, we're going to take the name that you passed us from the request body, um, and we're going to um, sort of like create a URI where you, the user is going to be able to access the simulation's uh, information. So this includes like um, 
where the world texture is, where the cloud texture is, where they can access all the agent information, all the stuff that is part of a simulation you can access from this URI. Uh, and so we want to see what terrain engine they want to use and what agent engine one they want to use. And this is like, OK, what, what, what kind of like very basic stuff can I put in here? So it's an example, but this is going to be, there's going to be probably tons of engines, different kinds of engines that you can use, right? Yes, yeah. So maybe in the first version of the API, we support 10 different types of engines, and we want to support a huge number of other types of engines in the future. Like we want to do galaxy modeling, and there will be a galaxy engine. They can specify which galaxy engine they want. Um, so um, they, um, so we want to find the um, train engine that they specified. Like we just don't want to like blindly accept that they passed us the correct data. So we want to find look up the train engine that they specified, um, and we want to if it's not there, we want to say hey, it's like a four hundred. That's a bad request. Uh, and then we want to find the agent engine that they specified, and same thing, uh, make sure it's there. And um, so the engine has like a name, a version, and the URI that the engine's located at. Um, so that MetaSim can talk to the engine and like query for data or post information to it if the user does something. Um, and so we want to get like the train engine endpoint, and we want to. Um, uh, get its simulations, because engines support a little bit of the medicine API. So they have like a resource for getting simulations and adding new simulations to the engines too. So we want to find out how we can make that post to the engine so that it's running the, our new simulation. Or it's like the agent engine will run the agent simulation and the train engine will run the, the train simulation. And so we have to tell it to start those simulations. And so we do the same thing that the console, or I'm sorry, the web page did to us. Uh, we make a post to the um, simulation add uh, URI, um, and we pass it like um, we pass it the location of where's the the medicine simulation, and so it knows. Hey, if I want to contact medicine to get like agent information, and I'm the train engine. This is where I go to do that. Yeah, so we create like one API to rule them all on the medicine um, component, and we say, uh, train engine, here you go, create a new simulation, and here's my um, URI if you need to access any other kinds of data that you don't want to deal with. Then we do agent engine, do the same thing. Um, and those engines um, create up their whatever they want to do for running their simulations, um, and they send back a location. We'll send back a um, a uh, location response header. So it says, "I accepted your post, and here's my part of the the simulation. It's, it's at this location. That's URI." And so um, we store that information, those URIs that we get back from each of the engines in our simulation object, and we store that in um, MongoDB. So we have a um, simulation that's object on on MetaSim, and it says, if you need data for terrain, you go to this terrain engine at this location, and you can pull a JPEG, or you pull JSON, or if you need agent information for this simulation, you go to this agent engine. Here's the, here's the location of that information. Um, and then one, like, real quick other thing is um, we, where is it? Um, uh, where is it? Um, it's this line. So um, we also set up additional um, forwarders in the medicine application. And we say if um, the browser performs a get on the um, path to the agent data, we want to actually accept that. And we want to forward that um, request to the engine. The engine will send the response back to medicine, and medicine will send that response back to the browser. And so it acts as this forwarding aggregation mechanism. Um, so 
it, yeah, it's going from browser to the medicine, and then medicine to the engine. And the engine will respond back to medicine, and then in turn, medicine will respond back to the to the browser. Uh, no, to the browser. Um, yeah, it just if the browser is initiating the call. If uh, engines initiating a call, like the terrain engine wants agent information, um, the terrain engine can query medicine, and medicine can query the other engine, and then that engine will respond back to medicine, and then medicine will respond to the, the originating engine. So the engines can also be clients, which is this like really cool, like um, like the inversion of the hierarchy kind of the self-referential uh, aspect of it. And so after the simulation's been created, um, we say um, yeah, we construct a simulation um, object and we put in some links there. So like if they want to delete it, they can do that. If they want to um, get the world texture, they can do that. If they want to get the agent um, information, they can do that. And then we send back a um, 201 created um, to the browser, and the browser gets the link to the new simulation that's been created on Medicine and all the engines, and then it can start accessing um, textures and agent information and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's that. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. So the idea is that this data can change, um, and uh, some. I mean, of course, some data will change more than others. So if you're doing like um, a terrain, you know, it might change a little bit. But if you're doing agents, they might change a lot. You might want to send um, uh, those requests to medicine for agent information and pull that more frequently. Yeah, that's exactly right. So say like agents like I want to find some I don't know what would be like some mountain top right now. I want to go to this top of this mountain. Uh, the agent simulation could query the um, query medicine for um, terrain data. Um, it's going to get back this JPEG like a height map presumably, and uh, uh, it can say oh it can identify maybe where a mountain is or something and. You can move the agent towards that mountain. Um, and then the next time that the browser wanted to get agent information, presumably it would um, get back uh, the new location of this agent. And he had been moved closer to this mountain top or something. Yeah, so that's it. The, um, the reference engines are like very small. All they do is like um, send back. Now here's a list of simulations that I'm running, and if you want to create a new simulation, it will put that in the, the Mongo collection. But that's they're a lot smaller than, than Medicine right now, uh, just because they use static data, and that's that's pretty much it. So that's what I want to show you guys. Cool. I know that was kind of long. <laughs> it was just a big dump of, of information. That was Yeah, so, so if you want some like highlights, um, it's um, Node.js, it's MongoDB, it's um, jQuery, and it's jQuery UI, and those are the technologies that are in play. Um, so there's a lot of callbacks. You have to, <laughs> to be comfortable with callbacks.
Totally, yeah. Yeah, there should be a... Um, uh, there's like a Mongo client that you can use and it has, I think it has a JavaScript engine in it and you can like execute these queries against um, the, the collections that you want and stuff and get that, that feedback that you want to get. <laughs> yeah, totally, yeah. Um, it, I mean, I've never used MongoDB before either and it took me a couple weeks to get everything up and running. So there's there's definitely that overhead. It looks like there's an online shell you can practice with, Tom. Yeah, the second link should take you right to it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, some kind of online shell or something. Okay. Yeah, if you haven't recorded, I could always try to record something myself. It'll probably go a lot more smoother the next time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I gotta take off. All right. See you guys later. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys.